Well, today on Nation a Window Cleaning Podcast, we're talking all about pricing window cleaning. Like, what to price, why to price, let's think about pricing. So if you're in business, especially window cleaning, make sure to stay tuned to a great episode of WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you love the episode, because guess what? There's five years of content. Go back, follow up. It is hundreds and hundreds of episodes and hundreds of hours of content. And if you don't want to see my face, it's available anywhere podcasts are. Or if you do want to play it in the background, uh, warning, I do have a face for radio, but my uh, videos are also on YouTube, so you can watch or listen any way that you want. Uh, shameless plug time, if you didn't know, I'm Jersey, and I work with Window Cleaning Resource, that's windowcleaner.com, the greatest place in the world to get window cleaning supplies, and I am the greatest rep in the world, according to me. For window cleaning supplies, so that's what I do. If you want to put an order in or let me put your order in, I would be absolutely blown away, and uh, it is absolutely awesome if you do. My number is 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone, so call me, text me more importantly. I do that all day long. Let me know when your card is ready. If I push the trigger instead of you, it costs you nothing extra, and I get credit for it, and you allow me to have this wonderful life that I live. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and uh, thank you in advance. Secondary, if you haven't yet gotten your subscription to American Window Cleaning Magazine, let me tell you, there is a magazine, a real paper magazine, that is really mailed to your door every single month that not only includes posters and articles and amazing things that you get to read on the toilet or anywhere, (laughs) but it also includes the greatest window cleaning stickers of all time. Yes, the window cleaning stickers you see, uh, those all come from the magazine. So get your subscription to the magazine. It would be absolutely amazing uh, if you did. Just go to awcmag.com forward slash sub and get a subscription. If you're in the US, we have it. If you're in Canada, we also now have Canadian subscriptions. So get your magazine subscription. And uh, by the way, I see when you uh, have a subscription. Every time a subscription comes through, I get a notification. So if you haven't yet, I know who you are. (laughs) Don't want to go. awcmag.com. Get your subscription. Do all that stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Anyway, on to the show. The reason you're here. But today we're talking about pricing. And I've done a lot of pricing because pricing is probably still the number one thing that people talk about. But... I've done pricing five years ago versus now. Prices have changed, obviously. Not only have prices changed, but in this episode, I actually want to talk about why we price a little bit. Let's just talk about it because a lot of times the backlash that I get when I talk about pricing is all of this like, yeah, no, my customers, they won't pay that. Or, yeah, that's okay, I make enough. I'm not trying to like, you know, uh, uh, screw anybody out of money. I'm not trying to take advantage of people. Listen, first off, first off, the most important thing you can think about in business in general, this is going to change everything from here on out, is that we are a luxury business. I beat this fact like a dead horse, but we are a luxury service. No one needs window cleaning. They don't. So they're choosing to have window cleaning because it makes them happy, right? If you have a problem pricing higher or charging more, it's because you don't value your service. I know people out there are still doing like, you know, $30 in production, $40 in production. Understand to run a company, it takes more than that. Well, I make a lot per hour. Yeah, but you're not talking about your hourly. When we talk pricing, we're talking about the hourly that you're going to pay yourself if you're out in the field. If you're not in the field, that hourly has to pay your employees to do the work. It has to pay you to sit in the office. It has to pay the admins to make sure that everything runs smoothly. 
On top of that, you have to pay the advertising. You have to pay your insurance, your fuel, your uh, auto insurance, the payments if you have any vehicles, the new equipment you need to rotate or buy. It pays for all of that, including uniforms, bonuses to your employees, taxes when they happen. There are so many more things in business that we pay so that when you're looking at the amount of money you're making, you're not looking at it as in this is what I'm making per hour because it's not. If you're proper at about $80 an hour, somewhere in that ballpark, if you're proper, that's per man hour is what you're charging. Out of that, you have your salary, but you have everything else coming out of that. Everything. Now, if you go, well, yeah, but that's a lot of money. I don't need to make that. Yes, you do. To run a successful business, you do. And let's talk about this. If you're in a company who does not want to get bigger or do more, you may still want to bring in more money so you can work less. If you're absolutely perfect exactly where you are and you are not willing to change or do anything better or anything to improve your business, awesome. A, this episode's not for you, but B, you know inflation was 9% last year? If you did nothing, it means you lost 9% this year over last year. You lost 9%. Your company is doing worse. No, no, no. We made more money this year. Okay, gross, but net you made less. A gallon of milk now costs 9% more. Fuel costs 100 and 20,000% more, but everything costs more. You're like, yeah, but that shouldn't. No, yes, it does matter. Understand that the value of money changes. That's what inflation is. Inflation means that back in the day when I was a kid, there were penny gumball machines. That means for a penny, you know that thing that you can't use for anything anymore? I could go after I got changed at the grocery store, after my mom spent her whopping $50 in groceries for the week. If there was change, I could take a penny and go get a gumball. Now, if you get pennies, you throw them on the ground or throw them in a little dish. No one uses pennies. A penny is not worth anything anymore. It was back then, right? So same concept is eventually a dollar will be that. People go, no, I don't. Lose. Of course. Of course. You can't take a dollar anymore and even go get a double cheeseburger and McChicken. There is no dollar menus. Maybe there is. I don't know not a huge fast food person. But last time I checked, there wasn't any of that stuff. Right? Back in the day, everybody had a dollar menu. You could go, and with our tax in Wisconsin at the time, I knew that for $1.05, I could buy an item off a menu for a dollar. Right? That was like high school math. I knew that with my lunch money, I could go to the store and buy a, a, a side of rice if I went to the Chinese place. And I knew it was a dollar. So $1.05, I could have a thing of rice. This is when I was in school, right? You try to find a way to go eat your, your lunch outside and something instead of, uh, instead of um, eating in the cafeteria. But dollars used to be worth something different. So prices change. You need to change. Yes, you're getting faster. But why are you getting better but not charging more? A, you should be charging more because you're getting better. And B, because of inflation, right? So price increases, we talk about that 100 times. I'm not talking about price increases, but I'm talking about why we price what we do. And that's super, super important. Again, if your business is not changing, you're going to lose money. Listen, you know Arizona iced tea? This is a change that just happened, so a lot of us know this. But forever. I mean, literally, since I was a kid, probably, it was 99 cents for that big, tall can of, of uh, Arizona iced tea. Always. They got to raise their price, right? 99 cent stuff doesn't exist anymore to the degree it used to. And the reason is because the money's changed. Well, the prices of stuff have gone up, of course, but money's changed. This is inflation. This is why we pay more. Don't say that, oh, you know, um, uh, it doesn't really affect me as much. You know, I don't have a, a ton of changes and, and, you know, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. It does. It 100% does. If you live in any country, inflation dictates everything. Your heating costs go up in your house. If you go out to eat with your family, a family of four now eats for like 100 bucks. I mean, 
not everywhere, but you know what I'm saying. You pay a lot more, right? Everything costs more, and this is why in company, you have to understand that your company prices have gone up. You pay more in insurance every year. You pay more for fueling your vehicles, right? You're buying uh, shirts and new uniforms. That all costs more. Everything goes up. With a diesel shortage, which is about to happen, that means everything that you buy will go up in price, every single thing. And the reason is, is because every single thing you buy shows up on a truck. When you go, oh, good thing none of my vehicles use diesel. Okay. But everything goes up because it's on a truck. The trucking expenses go up. That means they pass that cost along. The products then in turn go up. They don't go back down. Even with inflation, you'll see gas fluctuate itself, but you're not going to see prices of milk eventually go back to what they were in the 80s and 90s. Right? So we need to continue to advance. So we have to understand the why we charge what we charge to exist as a company. If you're having just a good job, okay, I don't understand it, but fine. Even if, even if you're a sole uh, operator and you do enough to get you where you are, you still own a company, right? There's still a lot of things you want to do. Maybe you do want to get stronger. Maybe you want to be more secure. Right? If you work one boss somewhere, he could fire you at any time. You work for uh, 100 bosses, it's really hard. You have a lot of more security, right? With that all comes still not losing money every single year. So you're always looking at that. Okay, off my high horse on pricing. But people always argue me in the pricing. They're like, oh, you, know, you, you preach to, to charge more to charge. Yes, everything goes up. You have to understand that. People are like, well, I haven't raised my prices in five. So you now make... A quarter less money than you did five years ago by charging the same thing because five years ago prices were different five years ago we were paying a buck fifty in gas or something just that alone to get to the job you're paying more money right people understand inflation you need to understand that as a business owner okay so there's two things in pricing that we look at and there is per pain in window cleaning or uh, piece job pricing, we'll say, right? This job will cost X amount. And then there's hourly, per man hour. Now, sometimes people say, well, I charge, I, I bid this way. I don't bid hourly, I bid this, right? We're looking at when we submit a, a price to the, the customer, it's always one price. It's not, hey, I think it's gonna take me five hours at this rate. We're not breaking it down, we're not itemizing it. We're doing it as here's the price for the job. But how you get there is different, right? So if you have pricing per hour versus per pane, it's the same exact thing. Because you can get X amount of panes done in the hour. So you're saying, okay, well, I do, uh, you know, $4 a pane. I can do, you know, 20 panes in an hour on a commercial property, which gets me to about $80 an hour. That's how you think about it. Okay, so my production is $80 an hour. If you look at something that's super difficult and you charge per pane, that price could be off, right? If you got tons of transoms or sheet glass where you're just doing everything all at one time, your pricing per pane is way off. Like if you're using water fed and you have French windows, the largest job that I had per hour in history ever was a French job. It was a big house. Uh, we charged them $799, and it took us just under an hour, just add an hour, basically, with one person. With talk time and everything set up, it was like an hour and 15 minutes. They were, That's from pulling up to pulling away. It was $799 for one person. And those people were ecstatic because we had the magic wand to make that happen. Right? But if you did it individually, it would take you all day without a water fit. So not understanding those prices. But when you look at that per pane... That's why you get that. If you went and said, okay, well, uh, it takes us an hour, so this entire job will charge you uh, 85 bucks. If you did it that way, you would be leaving money on the table. The customer would still be happy at $7.99 because if you did it with a squeegee, that's how long it would take you, and they'd be ecstatic at that price because it'd take you two days, right? So it's more or less what you're looking at, the structure, but it's a total price. The total price is what gets it you there. How you get there is up to you. 
Now, in that particular job, we bid it because in Wisconsin, I can't use water fit all year round. So if somebody wants me to do that job in the winter, it's going to take me a lot longer. I'm going to get paid. I'm not stepping over dollars to make pennies, right? That's why that gets priced the way it is. But when we look at the how we bid, it's hourly as far as production. And that's why I always talk about that. Uh, say $75 to $85 per man hour. I had a guy tell me um, the other day that he does, everyone in his crew does um, $125 an hour. That's his production on Windows. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think that is quite high, depending on markets, maybe. But some people are up there. I've also had people telling me they're literally doing it for 30, 40 bucks an hour. You got everything else. You had to get there in your truck. You're using rubber, changing rubber daily. Like all these things kind of go into that price that has to go into that hourly. It's not just hourly, but cost of our production is what brings it in, right? That's why if you're doing $80 an hour, you're not paying somebody $80 an hour. You're only making X amount off that because you got a lot of other things to pay for, right? But let's talk about the main ones. We got route, commercial, and residential. Let's talk pricing specifically. Now, route means it's once a week, once every two weeks, or once a month. I hate once a month. I don't even want to keep that in there, but technically pricing should be, you should increase your price if you're once a month versus once every two or one week. Commercial means it's something you're doing less frequent than that. Once a quarter, once every six months, or once a year, right? And the reason is, is because of the amount of work you're doing to that. Now, let me put something out there that you know, but may open up a window into window cleaning. If you do a job every week, sweet. If you do a job every two weeks, now you just went from one week to every two weeks, 99.9% .9 of everybody that's out there will charge the same exact money. If you do it every two weeks instead of every week, you're removing twice the dirt for the same price. Think about that. I understand that twice the dirt, two weeks of dirt versus one week of dirt isn't really, you know, a big difference. But it is a difference. When your brain is looking at these things and you go, ah, it's, it should be about, it's about the same. About the same is not the same. You need to take all of those little facts into play. If you're doing a house, they didn't call you but every two years. You got other houses you're doing every six months because you're using the dentist clothes because you're awesome. Six months to every two years, you're cleaning, you're cleaning 400% of the debris off the glass. Those guys doing six months versus every two years when the other person calls, you're charging the same amount, aren't you? Aren't you? You're cleaning 400% or four times the amount of debris in the glass, dirt, bugs, crusted on stuff. You have four times more sun to bake it on. You have four times more birds to aim at your windows. You have all that, but yet you're charging the same. Go back to route. Route itself, years ago, we were at a buck a window. You can't do it for a buck a window anymore. We're up to $1.50 per pane per side, up to about $2 per pane per side. Don't use the word window when you're bidding because a window is a billion different things. A window could be a French window all the way to a casement. It is not a window, it's not a window. It is a pane. A pane means one piece. Pane equals piece. Pane equals piece. A pane of glass is what we charge. I don't even bid insides of route unless they specifically ask me to. Why is that? 
because it's going to take me longer to get through all the crap, the offices, the cubicles. It's going to take me longer to get past, if it's a convenience store, all the signs and the tape and the, you know, pallets of soda and, you know, the lottery signs and the neons. It will take me longer for the insides. I will charge more for the insides because it takes me longer. I'm looking for streamline. And my routes, if I can do outside, which probably, probably 75% maybe is outside only, I can rock that. It takes me just as long to do the outsides of the windows as it does to drop the envelope off at the job. That's how routes make money, right? Now you can go back into quality and everything like that. I'm doing quality work. It's the timing because I'm not having to deal with all the other things. If you're taking more time, remember we bid on time. You're charging more money. If I'm cleaning your windows and I'm cleaning off more dirt, it takes me more time. I'm charging you more. If I'm cleaning the inside windows of a gyro restaurant versus the outside windows of an office, I'm going to charge you more on the gyro because it's going to take me way longer. Like these are the things in pricing you have to understand. When you hear these guys that say, well, we charge, you know, we make, uh, we do $150 a man hour. And they're saying that's on every single job. If that's absolutely right, then if you look at their pain price, it is different between everything. Because different storefronts will take you more or less time. A storefront with bushes will take you more time than a storefront that you walk up that has a sidewalk. A second floor storefront will take you more time than a first floor storefront, right? On houses, same thing. Hills, bushes, air conditioners, trees, all the things you have to work with. If you're really doing that and changing your price per window because of the difficulty, then you could average the same amount per hour. That's great. Then you make the same amount per hour. That means that one window may you may charge $5 for one pane, but the next pane you may charge $22 for. If you're doing it that way and you're structuring it, awesome. You're looking at your time. If you're not for ease, that's fine, but raise everything up. I'm okay with making $799 for an hour's worth of work because I have other jobs that I may not make that much. Our average for the day is what I look at. That includes drive time. That includes bathroom breaks and stops and everything else these guys are doing. That includes setup in the beginning of the day. I take my day from when they punch in to when they punch out. Take all that money and I divide it by the hours to find out what my hourly is. Doing it that way takes everything into account. But then that helps you get better, get closer, get tighter, get closer in the, in the uh, um, scheduling it means your calendar is tighter, right? So if you're in an area, you're in one area over there, another day you're over here, you're over there. You have to look at that time. Don't waste time when you're doing all this stuff. But my route prices right now, route prices, you're talking about $2, $1.50 to $2 per pane per side that's out. When you get into commercial, commercial's about 4 to $5 per pane for the outs. You're not bidding the ins normally. Residential, you're talking about a normal in and out price of $750 per pane. A double hung window, inside and outside, should be around $15. Some of you are a lot higher than that. That's awesome. Adding tracks adds money. Adding screens adds money. If you're under any of those prices, you were way under the average. You get to raise that because guess what? You own a business. You own a business. Do you know how much? Let, let me, let's use an example because you know that I love my, my examples. Most of them are garbage, but this one might work. If I go buy a 20 ounce soda from any store that's in the little cooler, they have a contract with Coca Cola and they're exorbitant. You go buy a cold soda at the register, it's $1.99 now. If I go and also buy a Dasani water that's right next to the soda, it is $1.99. Do you think that a water versus a soda have zero difference in price? 
not really. But they charge so much money that it evens everything out. So they're looking at their per piece price, just like you are. You're looking at your hourly price. If you put in the effort to put the hourly, you have to then do certain things. If I'm doing a construction clean in my uh, area, I'm going to charge a lot more for it because my hourly will still be the same. If something takes more of a pain in the butt, I'm going to probably charge a little bit more, which means that any unforeseen things I'll be covered for. Look at your pricing. Next time you do a project, break it in two different ways. So you're bidding, and I do a bunch of this all the time. That's why I'm giving you this kind of example. But put it out. Look at that project that you're doing. Okay, storefront, offices, whatever it is. It's going to take you X, Y, Z. Okay, look at that. You've already priced it per pane. You priced it whatever. You've probably done the whole pull the price out of your butt thing, which a lot of guys do. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I think it'll be like uh, twenty. 2800 2800 probably is a price okay cool let's break it down how many windows are there panes okay tell me the pain how long do you think it'll take ah, i should take two guys probably i don't know six hours okay if you think you can get that awesome but let's go back to averages of what we charge the reason of why we charge it you know in math when you do a problem you know x plus three equals seven you know what x is, right? If you know algebra, x plus 3 equals 7. All you do is you take 7 minus 3 equals x. Well, 7 minus 3, you're going to get the answer anyway, right? You know it's 5. So you replace x with 5, and now you can make sure that that's proper by running 5 plus 3 equals 7. Yes, you just explained what x is. You figured that out. X is our price. That's what we're going to charge. A lot of times people look at it and go, well, I don't know what X is. What should I charge? They put it out there, but they never rework their math. They never make sure their number's right. If you look at X plus 3 equals 7, and you never check it, you go, I don't know, uh, 30? I think 30. 30 sounds right. Well, if that's what you're going on, that's what a lot of people do with their pricing. Like, oh man, I didn't get that job. I don't know. Okay, did you rework your numbers? Did you figure out if that was the right answer? We're figuring X. If you put the number down, you tell me that it's going to take you, what do we say, $2,800. $2, I'm going to do some maths, and I have to do it on the thing. If you say a job is going to take you twenty, or it's going to be $2,800, and you think it should take you, we'll say eight hours. Okay? Eight hours, two guys, is 16 man hours. Right? 16 man hours means you're charging these people $175 an hour. Is that your price? Are they going to pay you $175 an hour? If your answer is yes, your price is right. If you go, oh gosh, no. Like, I'm at $85 an hour. Okay? So let's check our math numbers. Again, if you're at, we'll say 85, just because, again, simple numbers. This may be higher than you or lower than you. But at $85, and you're um, two people on job, and those two people are going to get done in six hours, that job is $1,020. Do you think you were going to get a job at $2,800 because you pulled that number out of your rear end you didn't rework the numbers or check your math or even see if it made sense. And now you look at it and go, wow, that seems really low. Okay, stop. You th said that it would take you eight hours. Do you really think when you said eight hours, oh man, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it should take two full days with two guys. No, you're not that far off when you look at hours. You're not that far off when you look at everything. If you're trying to see if your price is right, that's what you do. You rework the numbers to double check your math. Understand why we're charging what we are. But rework your numbers to figure out what it is, right? If you ever uh, have a price for anything, here's an interesting thing. If you, you go and buy grapes, right? 
And those grapes are, you know, $10. Count the number of grapes in there. It's really easy to go, oh, $10 for grapes is kind of expensive, right? Count the grapes. Divide the grapes by how much money it is and see what every single grape will cost you. Do you still want those grapes? If every grape is costing you 50 cents, do you want to go 50 cents, 50 cents? People look at the total overall and they go, oh, that makes sense, right? If you are eating any type of like diety stuff, right? I eat keto, you guys know that. Everything is expensive. I could be like, wow, those peanut butter cups look really good. It's $11 for four. You're like, ah, it's 11 bucks, not bad. Okay, but for four, would you go to the store, not being keto, and pay that much money for each one? Divide it. Just rework the numbers. Understand you can break down numbers a lot of different ways. When you break down the numbers, it comes to be more understanding. And that's where pricing is. Understand your hourly, understand your worth, understand why you're charging as much as you are. You're running a business. There's lots of prices and costs that go along with business. <sighs> anyway, we're going into slow season. We're going into uh, holiday seasons and everything else. I hope everything's going absolutely amazing. And if you want to make my holidays... Let me put your order in for you. That's what I do to make money, right? 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Text me, call me, let me put your order in. I would absolutely appreciate that. And it's like a virtual high five because you're awesome. And yeah. And if you want to be doubly awesome, which we would call an epic cool kid, then get the magazine, awcmag.com, the only magazine that is out for window cleaning. It's been around since 1986. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, so much work goes into it. So many amazing journalists. The stickers are absolutely awesome. Everything is cool with the magazine. Get it because we're nerds together. PWCMAG.com. Get the magazine. So, Anyway, thanks for everything, guys. Hopefully, you understand your pricing a little bit better. Going into the new year, maybe you change some things. But more importantly... Yeah,